Oh, hi there. Welcome to North of Weatherfield, the Canadian Coronation Street podcast. We're on episode something or other. What oh, I forgot to write this? that down. I think seven. It might be seven. I think you're right. Mm-hmm. Um, my name is Brittle Star. I'm Shannon. These aren't our real names, of course. Our real names these this week are... I, f- I feel in tribute that you should be Fred this week. Because I think just I passed away like week. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. I say, I say, I think I should be Fred this week. He was a bit sort of like Foghorn Leghorn. Yes. Yes. Except Yorkshire rather than Southern. Southern. But same idea. Anyway, we'll hold for theme. Here we go. Any second now. <laughs> I'm waiting. Because then we can find out who I am. All right. Here we go. All right. Now, can we talk about who I am? Yes. Who are you? I'm going to go with the uh, same theme of uh, beloved passed away characters in real life and on the show. And I'm going to be Deirdre. Okay. I I still think of as Deirdre Rashid, Deirdre Barlow. And I'm going to really to do that. I'm just going to stretch out my neck and I'm not going to open my teeth very much. You're going to have big glasses with the upside down frames. I know. I've just got reading glasses. That won't do. <laughs> exactly. Um, and I was walking on her way recently. Well, as well. that's Deirdre that's Barlow what, Way. Which is so weird. It's it, named after the character, the not character. the person. <laughs> Anyways, we are talking about episodes that of Coronation Street that aired in Canada uh, February 19th to 23rd. So if you haven't watched them yet and you don't want to know what happened, don't listen to this right now because it is... Aver- yeah. To say spoilers is an understatement. That's right. Avert your eyes and your ears if yep. you're just listening. Yeah. Um, um, so speaking of Deirdre Barlow Way, you are in Manchester. I'm in Manchester right now. But and you weren't allowed was... to go to the Coronation Street no. set tour. I'm in Manchester right now, and I'm downtown Ma- Manchester, uh, like in the city center. And uh, this morning... Like near the Trafford, Trafford Center? Maybe. I don't know. No, I think Maybe. it's pretty close to. I think it's close to Weatherfield. <laughs> Shh, Weatherfield doesn't exist. Shh, it does. In our in our hearts and minds, it does. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it's. I was. I was. I'm in the city center now. But this morning, I was right by Coronation, like literally right by the actual Coronation Street. Meaning, like exciting. the set. Yeah, yes. but there's actually but I, the road is actually mapped as like oh that's Coronation nice. Street. That's yeah. good. Anyways, which I won't really let cool. him do the tour without me, which is why he hasn't done the tour. I'm seven kilometers away from the Trafford Center. <laughs> uh, so this week, there's a lot of topics. Some of which yeah. were short, some were prolonged, but it felt like we were uh, transitioning out of a bunch and into a bunch. So we're going to be talking yeah. about Liam and Dylan. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about Bernie, Paul, and Gemma. Yep. We're going to be talking about Simon. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to be talking about Tracy, Steve, and Tommy O. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about Edison Bailey. Yeah. This 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 is a big week because I've been watching. Me. I've been watching over here in the UK, uh, but through CBC, so that I don't get any spoilers. So I'm just C- I'm in the same CBC Gem app. CBC, sorry, CBC Gem app which you're technically not allowed to watch outside of Canada. Um, but just uh, I got special teenager to mid twenties and they'll tell you how to do that. They'll tell you how to do it. Exactly. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, there was a ton of stuff that happened. I, I would, I would, I'd be tired at the end of the day and then I'd go back to the hotel room and I'd crank up the coronation street through CBC gem app. And it was like, okay, this is a, this is worth paying attention for. It's worth staying up for. Oof, well, some of them were anyways. What? Uh, all right, Liam and Dylan. So uh, Liam accepts, allows Dylan's version of the fight to mm. be to go forward at school. Uh, mm. That Liam started it. I mean, sorry, yes, yeah, that Liam started it's it. It's not good. And uh, then the cops were called. He was going to be charged. They went in. He pleaded guilty. 
didn't give <clears throat> any mm. additional background to anything. He just said, yep, I did it. Um, and so he had to make a formal apology to Dylan. Um, and you sort of thought when he was doing that, and then the adults, Maria and uh, Gary and Sean all started bickering. And you sort of thought, like, I thought maybe Dylan and Liam would bond a bit over that and kind of become friends mm -hmm. again. Yeah. But no. But no. Uh, so Liam is still suspended and Dylan has warned him that they're just going to get him when he comes back to school anyways. Which is, I mean, I was so frustrated watching that for a couple of reasons. One is because, again, the school and the teachers, come on, they would know that Mason is a bad egg. It's not like I he's agree. new at being a bad egg. And I they agree. would also know looking at Liam, you'd be like, come on, this kid's this kid's not the bully in this situation at yeah. all. There's no way he's the bully. Yeah, to be fair, Dylan's and then the second part that bothered Dylan's me, newer at being a bad egg. Dylan is newer the, at being a bad egg, and he's a good one though at being a bad egg. It really comes natural <laughs> to him. Uh, yeah. Um but uh the other part that bothered me was the fact that uh, Liam could have, he, I mean, you're right. I, I was totally expecting Liam and Dylan to, to bond over it because, uh, cause Liam could have thrown them in it. He could have, he, he could have, he could have caused a lot of problems. Yep. He had, a, he, he yep. had all the power right there. And then yep. even if it meant yeah. some retribution later, he's still going to get retribution anyway. So he had all the power and he could have thrown them in it and, uh, and got them in trouble with the police and with the school and all that kind of stuff. Yep. I know. I agree. Frustrating. I did like, though, that he went into the shop with Gary and he was taking a bit of an interest in, like, fixing stuff and things. So that's good. I did like that, too. I did like that, too. Yes. Nice little bonding. Uh, so the other thing we'll talk about somewhat briefly. So Bernie, Paul, and Gemma getting in the yeah. RV. Yeah. Heading off for this one-night adventure. Yeah. So they get stuck in a field in the dark because Bernie won't use GPS, insists on using a map, can't see where they're going, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I have yeah. a massive problem with this whole off-campus filming incident. <laughs> Me too. I think it was so many potholes. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so they're complaining she didn't use GPS, they got lost because they're using a map. However, they had no cell service, so you couldn't have used GPS anyways. Mm -hmm. Paul... That whole 24 hours they were away and stuck, never needed to use the bathroom once, as far as I could tell. Um, I know. And then when the rugby players appeared, he was just suddenly magically outside in his chair. Like, who's lifting him? Like, yeah. The... And then it was all <laughs> designed. This, this whole thing was basically a plot line just to get... Uh, Bernie and Gemma to find out that Paul was going to be, was considering using um, uh, medically assisted death on his own or with Billy. Um, but then when, so when they got the cell service and Billy got through and Billy accidentally mm -hmm. blabbed to Gemma because he thought it was Paul and he thought Paul was offing himself. No, at one, no point did they say, oh, uh, yeah, we're in a field, we're stuck, we don't know where we are. Can you please come get us? They just said, I know Phew, that was good that we sorted that out. And now we'll just hang up the phone. I, I have, I had a problem with it too. I thought it was like, it was a little sloppy and it, it made me feel like, like it, it was, it, they were, it was just being done to be like, this is just a bonding moment for them. But I mean, it were, there were so many plot holes in it. It bothered and, me. And it didn't seem like there was a lot of bonding. It just no, seemed, there I don't wasn't know. a lot of bonding. Were they doing someone a favor by <clears throat> renting the RV for a lot of money for that filming? Like, what was going on there? I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't enjoy it at all. And I find, but I also find like I think I want Bernie's character to be smarter because she's not dumb. Her character's not dumb. Agreed. So if you think that she's she would have a little bit of forward planning, like oh, I got this deal and on the, borrowed this RV. And I know exactly where I'm going and I better be careful because I need to make sure that we cover these bases. We need to make sure that Paul can get to the washroom, that yeah. we're not out of touch with people. And plus also there's, I mean, communication, communication, folks. That's yep. the key to everything. Yep. Tell people what you're doing. Talk to yep. each other. Yeah. Like why wouldn't Paul have left a message on Billy's phone saying, hey, I'm gone camping overnight with my I mom know. and 
sister. Don't worry. Don't panic. Talk to you soon. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, yeah. And the, yeah. That whole plot line really annoyed me. I did want and, to also bring up, just as a last little thing, so further on in their story, once they're back, um, Ernie gets ticked seeing uh, Todd and Moses when Moses is late going to see Paul to be his PA, personal assistant, oh, yeah. his PSW. <clears throat> and he was really upset. He'd had a terrible day. One of his clients was dying, blah, blah, blah. Todd gives him a <laughs> hug. Bernie reports him. <sighs> Bernie, so what's de what's Dev doing slumming with Bernie? I know, I know, but um, well, I mean, who else are you going to go for on the street? There's very limited. Yeah, it's, true. it's a limited can't, choice can't for Dev. Go anywhere, we should exactly. maybe see if the detective sergeant or whatever is single. Swain. Um, yes, um, but I did want to say one of the things that that they bring up in that, and it's the same here in Ontario, and I'm sure in Canada, is uh, it's so great that we have PSWs who are funded. Um, by the government for people who need them. However, sure. they have to, there is no logic to the way they have to travel. They just have to go from one appointment to the other in the order they're told. Yeah. They don't get adequately paid <clears throat> for their time and their mileage because they have to use their own vehicles. So this is a genuine problem everywhere. So everywhere. Exactly. Having just, I agree. Having just recently experienced uh, long-term PSWs um, with your dad. Uh, yes. This is something I would like to point out. Yes, PSWs are paid a decent rate per hour, but it's not enough for having to go it's, places it's, in your own car. I mean, they're only kind of paid a decent rate. Like, considering what they do, the, the good ones aren't paid enough. And they'd, be, they'd be paid okay if that's all they're doing. If that's yes. all they're doing, exactly. And they, you're right. They have to get from one place to another. And poor Moses. He's poor just Moses. trying to help. He's just, He's trying, just trying to help to... and bring happiness to people. Yes, while being loving. Exactly. And lovely. Well, again, and yep. getting a little Todd on the side. Who's gonna be, who's gonna begrudge him that? Not me. I know. I know. I know. Stupid Bernie. Yeah. Anyways. Um okay, Simon. Oh Simon. So Simon oh. uh so his drinking is becoming evidently more problem drinking. Um he's mm -hmm. just coming home on his own, getting bladdered, wrecking Nick's papers. Um and then after a night out, he called in sick, said it was the flu, and then went on a pub crawl with some imaginary mates. And then, but was done the pub crawl in time to show up back at work in time to go for lunch at 1 p.m.? What? And then, and then Bobby seemed to think that Simon seemed like he'd been drinking that day, but he was basically okay. But then they had two more pints. So, so to Simon's credit, when Carla asked him to drive the van, he just said, no, I'm not. Yes. Good for so Simon. I appreciated that. Yeah. Um, I will say as a, a fight. Uh, oh yeah, well, I know, but that's, it's cause he's Peter's son. Um, I will say as a parent, when you have <laughs> teenagers to young adults, especially teenagers mm -hmm. though, who yeah. are able to drive, <clears throat> if ever you ask them mm -hmm. to drive you somewhere and they say no, don't ask them why, because it could be that they've nope. consumed something that they know you would give them hell for. Yeah. It's far better to just accept that they aren't giving you a lift than to have them try to pretend they aren't under the influence of something and to exactly. drive. Exactly. Exactly. So. It means they're making a responsible choice and that needs to be not celebrated. That means you but need to call to a be. cab. Yes. That means you need to call a cab. Exactly. <laughs> um, so... Anyway, so Simon, spiraling badly, um, gets fired by Carla because he's being lippy. Sure. Uh, and then Peter gets in touch with him and says, or rather he calls Peter because he's upset. And Peter says, hey, come on down on the boat. We have a crew spot open. I'll mm -hmm. fly you down here. You can <clears> join <throat> us. It'll be great. Yeah. And it's like, that's great. Peter's actually doing some parenting. Yes, and exactly. Finally. If Peter is sober on the boat, this will be probably a good little break for Simon, a little reset. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But then what happened? Well, then it was Peter being an idiot. He probably zonked out on vapes. He uh, <laughs> he spoke too soon, and yeah. there was no there was no job to be had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's just like, "Oh well, sorry, see ya." And that was the end of that. That was the end like, of that. What, Poor Simon. What is going he was, on? 
poor Simon was so happy. <clears throat> And that's the thing about Simon is that I, 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 I always feel like, oh, and I was all like when they, the offer for the job came along, I was like, okay, good. He's gone. Hopefully he's <laughs> out of the show for a bit. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah. However, I have to be honest, the character Simon, when he's good, I kind of like him. Yep. Agreed. You know? Yep. Yep. It's not, uh, it's not his fault. He has uh, three parents and none of them are that great. I know. Leanne's exactly. okay. Leanne's okay generally and all right yeah exactly yeah. exactly yeah. um yes anyways and then simon also sees when he goes to ask carla for his job back sees bobby and carla sitting in the bistro toasting the fact that bobby will be the only one doing that <laughs> job now <laughs> Which, first I, of all <clears throat> i get that bobby's a gabber i can't imagine anyone enjoying doing sales with him like there's no way no. i'm talking to bobby on the phone and saying yes i would like to do business with you bobby but you know, it's a cultural thing. Having been in Manchester for the past week, it's it's a cultural thing. It's it's a there's a weird, there's a bit of a gab that happens. I know that I've, I've had some like taxi drivers and some Uber drivers who are <clears throat> just eager to start chatting. One guy talked to me for twenty minutes in the car about heat pumps, and he Ooh, was just talking. I'm interested about heat in pumps. heat pumps, so that's good. I hope you got some good answers. I did. He was not a fan of them. He was, he was, he has one. He's had one for five years. He's been trying to get rid of it. He hates it, but it's all radiator heat for him. It was all, anyway, it was all, it was all the whole concept of forced air heating. It made no sense to him at all. Oh yeah. No, <clears> they <throat> don't have that there. Yeah. yeah. And um, anyway, he, there's like a whole cultural thing about like this, just sort of, you know, cheeky chappy sort of type thing, Yeah. which I, I don't need a lot of that. Well, you know and I, mean? I feel that Simon could have done that part of it in his sales. Mm -hmm. He was obviously good. Bobby's just too much. Sorry, yeah, Bobby. And it's not to say, to be clear, it's not to say that everyone in Manchester is like Bobby. They don't all oh. just keep running off at the mouth like that. They're, they're okay, much that's good. smarter and nicer and funnier. Um, <laughs> but what's my biggest concern about Bobby mm -hmm. is that I'm going to end up liking him. Well, I mean, they tend to do this, right? They bring in a character, they mm -hmm. make you hate them at the beginning, and then you love them. Do you think um, his character was brought in and, and it was the idea, his character was brought in and the idea was like, oh, people are going to love this character? Like, do you think there are people out there watching right now going, God, I love Bobby. Are you one of those people? Say, so tell us in the comments. But it, it, it can't be true, is it? I don't, I feel at this point, I don't feel anyone loves Bobby. I love the fact okay, that good. Uh, they're actually, well, I was going to say they're going to be able to address accessibility concerns, but they don't. He just automatically no. appears down the, whatever magical way Izzy gets out of the factory. Um, yeah. And it's like how Izzy gets out of Roy's, gets Roy's to, roles. Yeah. And Carla's. Like, yeah. And um, yes, like how's he getting in the doors at the bistro? Yeah. Anyways, the, and Rover, the Rovers. How does he do this but, little shuffle? But I will say representation matters. So that's good. Yep. That's, I like that part nope. of it. Yes. I just hope that they actually, you know, maybe finally make stuff actually accessible. On Coronation Street. Well, that'd be a bit much. I, think. I don't know about that. It seems a lot. <laughs> um, so next one we're going on to. Speaking of characters yes. that evolve over time. Tracy, Steve, and Tommy O. <clears throat> oh, this has caused me great consternation. <laughs> it has. So, so Tracy ends up hiring Tommy Orpington, ex-football yeah. player and yeah. very nice looking man uh, to be her painter decorator to fix the bedroom. Mm -hmm. Steve had neglected to fix the bedroom. He was like, fine, whatever. Then he finds out it's Tommy Orpington. And to be fair, Tracy has no interest in him. When she got his card as a decorator, she was just like, this is someone I've heard of. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Poor Steve's face when he found out he was going to have to go visit his daughter, Emma, for the instead first time of... in three years yeah. in France, instead of hanging out watching Tommy O paint his bedroom exactly. ceiling. Yeah. Um, so Steve had to go. Tracy and Tommy get on very well. I was going to say like house on fire. That's a dangerous phrase to use on Coronation mm -hmm. Street. Yeah, it is. Um, and there was a little bit of chemistry at the end of this I week. I know. I know. And this has caused me, this has caused me, it was upsetting for me to watch. Um, and also tellingly when they were out back having their cup of tea or whatever, uh, Tommy talking about his divorce and stuff and saying that he believes that no relationship is ever permanent. They're all just passing, which uh, I think was him kind of like 
casting is yeah listen i don't want any strings i don't want any strings but that's probably why i haven't been able to get a pickup girls very well in my life i can't (laughs) do that yeah that might get a horse to trot yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah um it's caused me great consternation and you, and you probably know why it's caused me great consternation and great and great concern. And it's made, it was stressful to watch. Cause I told you about two weeks ago, I had a dream that you were having, you're canoodling with the mailman. <laughs> we don't even have a mailman. <laughs> we don't even have a mailman, but I was, I woke up and I was angry at you. And I was like, how dare she have an affair with our mailman? It but was then I was also, I was all quite, concerned as well. It was quite the morning because I wouldn't apologize. And you were, a little ticked. <laughs> I was a little angry that my heart had been broken and I it's was feeling dream. so sad yeah. and so stressed out. And I woke up and I was like, oh no. But I was like, ah, oh, this is terrible. This is, and I was so concerned about you, about losing you to some ugh, good looking mailman. And uh, I can't imagine this is making me, my heart broke for Steve. I was like, Steve, Aww. buddy, I know how you, how you're going to feel. I Even know though how Steve gonna is going to feel like that in real life, and yours was a dream. Well, Steve's not real either. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will say one of the things I really enjoyed, though, was uh, better not uh, be canoodling. There was no canoodling. Mm. Uh, Kevin, Kirk, and Tim. Oh yeah, I did like that scene. Showing up, showing up at the house, showing up outside. I quite yeah. like that because I like this idea that because Kevin and Kirk have nothing to talk to each other about no. except Tommy O and exactly. their love of football. I did like them shuffling in and then yeah. finding out he's not there and shuffling out. That was pretty great. Yeah. I uh, I also enjoyed as they're getting, they're dropping in little bits of like what people would do in real life that has nothing to do with the plot. So I quite mm. enjoyed that Tommy O was like, James Bailey used to live on this street. It's like, that's the kind of thing people say in real life. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I um, like that too. I, I also don't like Tommy O too much credit. I don't trust the guy. <laughs> we don't have a mailman that looks like Tommy O. You're all right. That's all it takes <laughs> is if we had a mailman that looked like Tommy O. <laughs> um, I also enjoyed uh, Sally discussing her documentary she'd been watching on Gandhi and Jack the Ripper. Mm. <laughs> Coexisting in London. Because again, it's just like... Nothing yeah. to do with anything, but it's it's real but life. Just I interesting. Liked it. exactly. I like that. I like those exactly. bits. Exactly. Okay, and our last one, our big one, Edison Bailey. Oh. So. Ed. Aggie. Yeah. Aggie's yeah. never coming back. Aggie no. is never coming back. I wouldn't come back either. Um, so the bailiffs came. So it's always quite shocks me that in the UK or at least in England, I don't know if elsewhere. This is still a thing where if you have a debt, there are people who are licensed to show up to your house, go in, yeah, crazy, and take stuff that Amazing. adds up to that value. Like that's Dickensian. It is it's crazy. Um, now, uh, Ed decided rather than having them take uh, stuff away from the house. He was going to give them his tools because apparently you don't have to give them your tools if that's how you make your living. Your money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, But he did that. So they went over to the yard, gave him a bunch of tools. I did enjoy that afterwards Damon was like, no, you can still work for me. I'm going to find some friends to lend you some tools. I know. I know. Damon has proven himself that he's Mm -hmm. really turned a new leaf. Yep. Um, And... uh, so anyways, Edison goes to go sleep in the yard because staying at his pal's house fell through and Dee Dee had admitted that she was glad to have him out of the flat. Do we yet know why we've created this plot line of the lawyer's office being flooded so they have to work uh, in the flat? I don't remember any specific details that, that would say what like what that meant or why they, it was happening. They just happening. literally one day were like, oh... Yeah, we're in here in the Roy's Rolls working because it's flooded. Because the pipe burst flooded or something how? is flooded. I know. And then they've just been Aren't working. They the floor? No, they're ground level, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I don't understand. Um, I think you've frozen. They might come back. 
Hooray, we're still recording. I was concerned really? that you just, yeah, I was concerned that you just left me for the mailman, the Canadian Tommy, Tommy O. Again, there is no Canadian Tommy O. But if there was, is if that a there concern? Were, if there were is the correct grammar for that. <laughs> That's not the right answer. Edison Bailey. Edison Bailey. We don't know why the lawyer's office was flooded. We don't know what pro, what, that purpose, what purpose that serves. But there's, I don't even, it might be one of those storylines where they just kind of introduced it and it's like, it just, just is just a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so anyways, he goes to sleep in the yard in his sleeping bag with his space heater, his space heater that is not near his head. Cause you yeah. know, that's what you want to do is warm your toes at the end of your sleeping bag. You do. You want to keep your body, your core warm first. Yeah, you would first. want to put it right, right by your head, though. That'd be hot. No. Yeah. Um, next thing we know, uh, Mike, who was it? Damon was coming. Damon was coming along. Good old Damon. Yeah. Notices the place is on fire. Mm -hmm. Grabs his phone, starts calling emergency services, runs around the corner, finds Michael. Mm -hmm. Michael uh, slips through the slips through the yard gates which i mean anyone could have fit through those the way they were changed yeah. runs up yeah. the stairs fire everywhere checks the sleeping bag edison's not there but then the stairs that are wooden collapse they they're done yeah they're done in the fire he's stuck can't get out because the doors to outside are pull in doors so he's trying to get mm -hmm. out he can't he gives up Ed comes wandering around the corner with a bag of chips. Damon finds him, uh, tells him the yard's on fire. And oddly, that Damon just said to Ed, to Ed, yeah, that's a good idea. You go up those stairs to rescue him. <laughs> up the back stairs, which they had never existed someone. before. <laughs> Didn't they run down there when Tina was thrown off there? Oh, maybe. Maybe. That was the yeah, balcony maybe. she was yeah, killed yeah. from. <clears throat> yeah. Um, anyways, fire guys tell Craig... They're suspicious, smelled of white spirit, of like mm. flammable liquids. Yeah. Um, Craig then goes to his supervisor, D.S. Swain, and says, listen, <laughs> Edison Bailey has had a lot of gambling problems, mm, a lot of debt tinker. problems, and apparently it smells of white spirit. Keep your mouth shut, Tinker. Like, no one's going to tell Craig. I mean, we noticed that no one ever goes out for a drink with Craig anymore. No doubt. You can't tell that man anything. Nope. Nope. Because nothing would happen. Everything would be slowed down. <laughs> Ed uh, could have been in the clear and right back to gambling. <laughs> <laughs> now, I... Uh, so anyways, uh, with Ed, Ed being questioned, Michael then, who suddenly mm. made up with his dad and was all grateful, is now suspicious. Mm -hmm. And Dee Dee is suspicious, even though she's mm -hmm. representing him. Um, pointing out that uh, um, Daniel and Bertie, they lived in the flat that was right attached to there, like all the other people that could have been impacted. Mm -hmm. um, and then Ed says some weird stuff to me. So he said, so first of all, he was like, oh, no, I saw um, uh, Bertie and Daniel going out. So I knew they mm -hmm. were fine. Yeah. Who remembers Who that remembers kind of that? stuff? But, he, but it sounds all premeditated. Yes. And then it turns out that the, uh, uh, when they said to him, oh, do you have insurance on the yard? And that looks like that'll cover everything. He wasn't like, oh, yeah, I forgot. Mm -hmm. like, was he, he was keeping up his insurance payments mm -hmm. with all the stuff he wasn't paying? Mm -hmm. I don't know. And then in the end, he admitted to Didi that he didn't start the fire, but he didn't stop didn't the fire. Stop the fire. Yeah. So what, do you think, do you think he's telling the truth there? Yeah, I do. I do think, I think he, I think he, it did sound like it was premeditated a little bit, but it might've been subconsciously premeditated. I don't think he was like, oh, this is going to be a good plan. I think mm -hmm. he thought he, the fire started and he probably twigged to like, oh, insurance will pay for this. And then he thought, how do I cover my tracks? And then thought back, I thought, okay, I saw, I saw Daniel. Okay. No, it should be fine. I should be okay. It should be good. Mm. If it weren't for Tinker, ruining <laughs> everything. Wait, so you... Okay, now I have a problem with Craig telling, a, just essentially narking on his neighbors all the time. However, yeah, do you yeah. have a problem with him voicing his suspicions over a arson? 
<laughs> I mean, I don't, in gen, generally, I don't have a problem with people voicing their concerns over arson. <laughs> However, in this specific case, I have a problem with it because he lives on the street. Well, I know, but but also Edison's never stopping. Ed is well, just he's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Mark my words. Okay. Mark my words. Okay. Uh, is he de is he detective Tinker or constable? No, Tinker? he seems to have like stepped down. Remember, he was wearing PC the suits for a while. Yeah. I think now he's, he's back PC to being Tinker? a PC. Yeah. Okay. So so PC Tinker mm -hmm. is going to be on the take soon. He's going to be forced with a, a weird, horrible decision. He's going to be, and he's going to be on the take. Oh. And he's going to be the one, and then he's going to be. It'll be someone like Edison who's not who's not going to turn him in. Interesting. That's what I think. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's just the vibe. I didn't. This, that's not on premonition based on me looking at any nope. Coronation Street. I didn't watch any Coronation Streets here at all. No, I, I may have I, just by osmosis just standing beside the set this morning. <laughs> I may have got some vibes. I, uh, this is why I'm always terrible when I'm saying like, what was the name of that person? Why did, how did they die? Why did mm -hmm. they leave? Mm -hmm. Because I'm afraid to Google anything because I'm afraid yeah. I'll see the future. You'll so ruin it. Exactly. Yeah. That's my know, excuse exactly. for being not very on top of a bunch of stuff. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah but I'm, I'm feeling for Ed. I think that Ed's, he needs some serious professional help. Um, he does need serious professional help, but I, he's not getting it. So I, I'm no, I don't, I'm done yeah. with him. I'm done with him. <laughs> Just I'm you like and Michael. Aggie. You and yeah. Aggie have oh. written him off. So that was the other thing is that Michael phoned mom. <clears throat> Michael phoned Aggie and told her everything. Yeah. About time. About and, time is right. And really, Plus, can we not bring the dying elderly aunt to Weatherfield? I know. At this point? Exactly. Like okay, this woman just, is a trained nurse and uh, like a, like a, I don't know what you call it, but like a, I, I believe she has like a specific skill set. She's not just a general RN. Mm -hmm. She's like a whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but she's just not working for three months to care for a little old lady. Here's what, here's the thing that drives me insane about the UK. And it's a short list, <laughs> but it's a list. And this is one of the items. And uh, that is, so Birmingham is where Aggie is, right? May, is I right? don't know where she is. I thought she'd went to Birmingham to be with her aunt. She's somewhere in England and it's not like Portsmouth, Plymouth. So It's l about two hours away. Yep. Even if she went down to London, it's two hours away. <laughs> she could really just be popping over to help the woman get up in the morning and go to bed at night. And then... Exactly. She could at least be coming home occasionally. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sure would be a long day for her. Four hours in the car. She'd be okay, though. <laughs> That's like us going to Toronto and back. It's nothing. Yeah. Yep. I don't understand that part. I don't understand I agree. it. Well, I, and I haven't seen her in any other shows, so I don't know why she's away. Yeah. But hopefully she comes back. I do like the character, Aggie. I do like I, her. I quite like Aggie. Yeah. yeah. I she's agree. She's good. She's good. I agree. So. Um, yeah. Is it going to be a quieter week this coming week? I don't know. Um, that's kind of the way it goes, but it also feels like they didn't they didn't they didn't cap out on their excitement. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's going to be. I think we're going to have some good stuff coming up. I'm excited to watch this week as well. It should be good. It should be All good. right. All right. Yeah. Um, should we explain? I, I can't tell people why I'm in Manchester, but I can no. tell people that I that while I've been here, as you said at the top of the show. Um, I have not been allowed to go on the Coronation Street tour. That's correct. Every single person I've spoken to, I've said to them, and I've, I've admitted to them, I'm a fan of Coronation Street. Most of the pa people here, the Mancunians, not fans. It's too close to home. Right. It's, it's too. It's too much. It's too much in uh, real. Plus, I feel the fact that people are going getting for... murdered and stuff all the time. Yeah, I guess I don't know. <laughs> Plus, I feel like everybody there must know someone who's been on it at some point. I think so. Yes. I think so. Except there was one young fellow last night who was driving our Uber back. And I said, are you, uh, I said, I'm a fan of Coronation Street. Are you? And he went, yeah. He goes, but I haven't been able to watch because I have kids. And I was like, there's the omnibus. I'm sure there's an <laughs> omnibus here too. Yeah. You can spend some time. If you put the work in, you can get back on the street. That's exactly yeah. what I said to him last night. Nice. So I'm, nice. I'm hoping. 
Yeah. I, I, I believe in the future. That's that's how we did it when we had kids, the omnibus on a Sunday that's morning. That's the way to do it. Exactly. Yeah. And those little jerks are all tuckered out or doing something else. <laughs> doing something else where they're a bit too quiet, but you exactly. got to finish we, episode we five. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It was a big week. It was good. It was. And you didn't leave me for the mailman or Tommy O. No. Nope. Which is good. No. Nope. Um, but I'll, I'll chalk this up as a W. It's a win. I did eat a whole bag of chips on my own. Not in one sitting, though. Well, that doesn't count. You could eat anything, Meaning a whole that, bag of anything. If it's I mean, not that's pretty sitting. much all I've been up to since you've been away is just like oh. eating stuff I enjoy. Well, that's good. That's good. I, I hope you are having fun. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much for listening and thanks so much for watching. If you're watching, I'm going to switch over to the media tab now and uh, we're going to play the theme. Do you have anything else you want to add? We'll do a little tag at the end, of course. I don't have anything else I want to add. All right. There we go. And all I've got, I have to do my Deirdre go, was she a Tarallov? What was she? I think she was. What? Was she? How'd she say goodbye? She said yeah, it, she, she said it Tara, differently than Tara I did. Tarallov. Tarallov. coughing. Well, you have to smoke it up, smoke up the voice a bit. Tarallov. Tarallov. No, mm. didn't do it. Never mind. Go buy a pack of smokes and practice it for next week. <laughs> That'll be my homework. I say go buy a pack of smokes and try it for next week. There you go. That's more like yeah, it. See, that was my Fred. There you go. That was, that was not really committed, but that was good enough. That was pretty good.